My name is Chris Montgomery, and welcome to part three of our TN Special Alert on ransomware attacks. Today, we're going to review what actions you can take if you're the victim of a ransomware attack. Keep in mind, these actions should be performed in the order discussed as this will increase your chances of success. First, start by disconnecting your machine from your network or any other devices you may be connected to, including any external drives, as this will prevent the ransomware from spreading to other devices on your local network or to file syncing services such as Dropbox or OneDrive. Next, use a smartphone or camera to take a photograph of the ransom note presented on your screen. If you can take a screenshot, do so as well. You'll want to file a police report later after you go through all these steps. Since ransomware attacks are typically accompanied by a ransom request, you should determine if you're willing to pay. If you're not willing to pay and would rather resolve the issue internally, you should locate an antivirus or any malware software capable of cleaning the ransomware infection from the machine. Again, only do so if you are determined not to pay the ransom. Otherwise, you should wait until you've recovered your files via the decryption key. Keep in mind, removing the ransomware will not decrypt your files and it may kill your chances of getting the files back if you decide later to pay the ransom but it will let you carry out the following steps without the risk that the ransomware will encrypt new files or try to thwart the recovery process. Next, see if you can recover from your deleted files folder. Many forms of ransomware copy your files, encrypt the copies, and then delete the originals. Fortunately, you can often recover deleted files easily, assuming you have the right tools and knowledge to do so. Identify which strain of ransomware you're dealing with. If the ransomware doesn't provide its name, Try the ID Ransomware Online tool. This solution will allow you to upload encrypted files and will tell you whether the ransomware encryption can be reversed. However, in most cases, it can't. See if there are decryption tools available. If you already know the name of the ransomware strain, check out the list of decryption tools at the No More Ransom website and see if there is a matching decryptor. If you have a solid image-based backup solution in place, and assuming the ransomware has been fully removed, you can then restore your files. However, you'll want to make sure the backup files weren't encrypted prior to doing so. This alone illustrates the importance of having a backup solution that includes versioning and off-site storage. If you're just backing up over an existing backup nightly without any versioning, you could overwrite a good backup with the encrypted data. To confirm you have a good, uncompromised backup, connect the backup drive to another machine or log in to your online backup service. This will allow you to check on the status of the files. You also want to make sure you have the installation media or license keys for all third-party applications. If the backups are good, you'll want to fully wipe the drive, do a clean installation of the operating system, and then restore the files from the backup. You could also just restore the files from the backup drive without wiping and reinstalling the operating system, which might seem a little less troublesome, but it's not a good idea, since you might leave some trace of the ransomware on the machine even after performing a full antivirus scan. If these methods don't work, you'll have to make a choice, pay the ransom or give up the files. If you're going to pay the ransom, negotiate first. Many ransomware notes have instructions on how to contact the criminals running the malware. If so, contact them and haggle for a lower ransom. It works more often than you'd think. Once you agree on a set price, follow the instructions for paying. There's no guarantee your files will be freed, but the more sophisticated ransomware criminals usually do live up to their word. Finally, file a police report. I realize this may sound pointless, but it's a necessary legal step if you want to file an insurance claim or a lawsuit related to your infection. It will also help authorities track of infection rates and spreads. Needless to say, we've covered a lot of information today, but we haven't provided any specific solutions to address these needs. This is where an outsourced provider such as ThrottleNet can help. For example, our solutions have saved our clients over 2.6 million in ransoms over the last two years alone, and that number continues to grow. You should also consider outsourcing services even if you have an internal IT person. Simply provide supplemental support, as well as perform network monitoring and maintenance so your IT person can work on resolving actual end user issues. If you would like more information on ThrottleNet, or if you'd like a free network security evaluation, please visit us online at throttlenet.com or call us today at 866-829-5557.